What is making a legendary creature in Magic the Gathering into a viable commander for CDH? And what about the format? Is it a healthy format? Well, that is the topic of this video. Four years ago, I actually made a video explaining just that. Back then, my message was that your commander should either be a card drawing commander or something with a combo potential on it with as much colors as possible, as long as you don't desire bad cards choosing this commander. And that's it! However, over the years, a lot of things have actually happened. Back in the days, you played Frasius and Tumna, and that was it. You were basically getting four colors, you were getting an awesome card draw potential from the command zone, and you could win with infinite mana. Perfect. The best commanders in the world, and everything else was weird. Then, they started to print things like Jeska's Will and Undul Breach. Or cards like Daffy Voidwalker, Esper Sentinel, Dragon Rage Channeler, and Toski. Well, these are just examples. There are so many more cards that are just generally really good that is making the 99 so strong that you actually don't really need a dedicated commander for it. Back in the days when everyone was playing TNT, our decks were kinda mediocre. We were playing a lot of really bad cards. It was very easy to find like 40 cards or so that was great inside CDH metagame of sorts back then, but then you had fillers. Something like 30 or so fillers of cards you just had to play to fill up until you had a 100 card deck, or a 98 in this case. And because you had so many bad cards in the deck, you had to have really strong commanders to make sure you had a great game when you drew into your terrible cards. To give you a small example, imagining having an opening hand with a carpet of flowers, that's amazing, really strong ramp in CDH, or having an opening hand of wall of roots. Decent card overall, but there's a big power level difference between those cards. You don't really want to have Wall of Roots in your deck. You want to have more versions of Carpet of Flowers in your deck. But today we have more versions of Carpet of Flowers. Or not the same, same, but same power level-ish, so to say. Wizard of Coast have basically been very active on printing more cards for us. And that's basically solved the problem. So I really think that CDH is a very healthy format at the moment because you don't have to play only TNT to have success inside this game. To give you an example, here we have Minsk. So Minsk can't draw any cards. He would theoretically have a very terrible grindy game. However, we can include cards inside the 99 to easily solve this problem Professional Facebreaker, a new amazing red card, and Esper Sentinel already mentioned. So whatever flaw the commander has, that is something that 99 can easily fix. While Minsk from the command zone offers you a lot of one card combo potentials, if you draw into one of these five here, you basically win the game. Another clean example is Malcolm Kenai Navigator that combos off with Glinton Buccaneer as a one card combo. Now this is a command that doesn't have card draw in the command zone, well or well sure, you could partner this with Tumna to gain card draw, but normally you don't have card draw when you're playing Malcolm. For example, you normally partner this with Tana to gain green and red, red for Glinton and green for tutors for the Buccaneer. And this is extremely viable because you're gaining that one card combo and the 99 can basically solve all the card draw problems and interaction that you might need. Also, you're currently on three colors, so your 99 can be really teamer good. Let's look at an opposite example. Here we have Venota that wanna go to combat with a bunch of hate pairs and accumulate value. She has a card drawing capability. She is producing value over time, which is giving her a great grindy game plan. Venota can't combo off on her own. She doesn't have any combo on her card whatsoever. However, her card draw capability 
is drawing you into more cards to play with to sculpt a combo. Because we have seen an increased amount of combo cards as well. Looking back to the TNT days, we didn't have Glintorn back then. But now we do have Glintorn and that is helping out Malcolm. Another great example is Emil the Blessed that is comboing off with things like Dockside Extortionist. It actually can combo with other things as well, but yeah, we didn't have Emil back then. Alright, so far so good. Basically any commander right now could be CGH viable, right? Because you just take whatever commander you could think of and then say, well I will solve everything with just including the right cards inside the 99 and I will have a great deck, right? Sadly, no. Even though we have a lot of really new cards that is great at drawing cards and more combo cards, the 99 can't solve everything. Or it can, but it might be doing it weird. What I mean by that, and also how I am now going to define what is making a commander CDH viable, is if you have a game plan that your commander with the 99 can easily achieve and that game plan will perform tremendous power. Then your CDH viable. A great example of that is Tivit, a really expensive Esper commander that goes infinite with time sieve but also have a really great odd nauseum game plan. However, if you don't draw into either of those two, just having a lot of rituals inside your deck that is going to synergize greatly with your Ad Nauseum, you could ritual out your commander, gain treasures, gain clues, and then your commander will basically draw cards for you until you solve the problem by drawing into interactions, drawing into tutors, or drawing into time sieve itself. The game plan just works. So let's look at another example, Tibal Rakdos Cosmic Imposter, basically the same thing, you wanna odd nos, you wanna peer into the abyss, you wanna breach, you wanna dock side, you wanna do all kinds of cool stuff, but if you don't get your access to one of those two cards, well, you can slam Tibalt and then steal cards from your opponent, that's card draw, that's great, that's grinding you into value, into tutors, into finding one card combos, add nos and peer, and it actually doesn't really work. Or well, it kinda works sometimes, but it, in my opinion it's not perfect. I have actually played this commander quite a bunch, I really like the guy, I, I really like Rakdos Tibalt, it's a fun commander, but after like a while of playtesting it in games over and over, I you notice that it has problems with its game plan. It just doesn't get there. The reason why certain commanders game plan doesn't work probably deserves its own video. Each individual commander on its own for each individual video. For example, I've already made a video explaining why Shun Li actually doesn't really work and why she struggles. We can give both a tiny summarized little bit of an explanation here. They have a game plan that demands that certain things simply don't happen where those certain things frequently happens. To translate what I just said into English, there's a lot of really common cards a lot of people play that makes their game plan struggle. And that is why I'm using the word they have a really bad percentage. While Minsk doesn't. The big difference between Tibalt and Minsk here really just is that Minsk gets to do his game plan while Tibalt just runs into problems in my opinion. These problems are usually very hard to see at the surface and once you start to play test them a tiny bit you, you suddenly realize ah it doesn't work because of this. So the ultimate answer to basically figure out if a commander is somewhat CDH viable is to play test that commander's game plan and, and see if it gets there or if it just continuously hits a wall. But sometimes you can use the 99 to tweak the deck a tiny bit to make it possible for that commander and that game plan to actually work. Once again, make the 99 solve what the commander is lacking. I hope this helps out or that you got inspired. In the end, there's a lot of really possible commanders inside the format because there are so many different 
cards in the format now that can solve all kinds of strange problems various commanders and strange and cool game plans have. And because it is a little bit tricky and hard to actually figure out and understand, feel free to ask away regarding specific commanders what I think about them, or if I have some experience about them. I do try to playtest a lot of various commanders just so that I have a very vast knowledge about the majority of things out there, or I'm trying at least. But in any case, thanks for watching, see you around guys! Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you wanna support me, feel free to share my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Players website using the affiliate link in the description below of the video will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.